today I'm going to talk about a little R&D project that we have done at the NUMBI, where I work, um, about how we can use NLP and machine learning techniques to try to optimize processes. So you've heard like all the great application of those kind of new tech. So we try to use this internally to improve the different processes. And in this case, it was recruitment. How can we find the best candidates? or could we at least, uh, using machine learning. So, quickly about me, Meranam Victor Hay. I am not from India. Um, I'm French originally. I studied in different places like Sweden. I finished my PhD in the UK. Then I started working in London for the NAMBI. And I moved to India two years ago. Uh, a little bit over than that, actually. We're learning Hindi, so I know a bit of Tola Tola. Uh, and I'm in charge of our internal automated platform uh, for machine learning, which is why like this kind of project falls under this, uh, this department. So be before going to the actual application, I'm just going to talk about the NUMBI to explain why we started to talk to work on this. So the NUMBI primarily works with retailers, so like big supermarkets, and they take the, we take the data and we try to help them leverage this data to make better recommendations to the customers, um, improve the experience in store, you know, display on anything that is relevant, and so on. So they ask, we will give, we have product, you know, for recommendation in store, when you are moving, you know, through your app, and at home, you know, online. So we have clients all over the place in the world, like we have quite a lot, which means, which means that we need a lot of data scientists. So currently we have over 500 worldwide. So long story short, we have lots of data scientists, and that means we have to hire a lot, and therefore recruitment can become a bottleneck. So we have a huge community of data scientists. Uh, majority is based in India, in our Gurgaon office. And in average, in this office, we have 30 new joiners. So it can be either new people we hire like as a new opening, or it can be people who decide to move on and we have to backfill. So, Anybody who's done any recruiting knows that it's not the most exciting process for a manager. Uh, it usually takes a lot of time, and you're not even guaranteed to find exactly the profile you are looking for. So it's not an unknown uh, problem. I mean, you have lots of things, you know, talking about that. So I found this 52% uh, of people saying like the hardest part is to find, is to screen all the candidates. So for instance, I know for my role, when I applied in London, there were over 100 people who applied. So imagine the time that the recruiters have to go through, to spend, you know, just going through all the CV, just to sort out who is maybe relevant for the job or not at all. And the truth is, in average, 88% of the people who apply are not the right fit for the job. So there are different reasons for that. Either, you know, you're trying to explore different industries, you know, I just like a misleading job, job spec and so on. But anyway, in the end, what happened is that a lot of, a lot of time is wasted due to the large amount of CVs that are not properly selected. So it's like both time on the company side, on the management side, and your side when you're applying for a job. It's not nice to spend hours preparing for an interview, going through different runs to realize that actually it's not what you are looking for. Um, there is a problem that currently recruitment is primarily manual because it's a human based driven process and you know everybody makes mistakes so if you are familiar if you've done any latin by any chance you know that's a famous maxim where basically like everybody makes a mistake even the best one so you might have the best profile exactly who you are looking for in your list of applicants and you're going to miss, miss him or her and lots of the time from recruitment team, the manager will get a lot of CVs which are not actually relevant at all for the current job. So all of that just creates bottleneck. And the primary, prime, yeah, the primary reason is because it, everything relies on tags. So someone will say, I'm looking for someone, a data scientist who is good at Python and Spark. So, all right, that's uh, very nice. Obviously, that's what you need. But a lot of other people use and work with uh, Python and Spark. Uh, so I've put like three people like who are actually on my team. Uh, we have Suyok, who is a research data scientist, so he knows Python and Spark as a good data scientist. Uh, we have Razi, who is a data science engineer, so he's doing com something completely different, but he's also very skilled at Python and Spark. 
And then we have a backend engineer, Patrick, who also is very good at Python and Spark. So those three people applied for the role of a data scientist. They would all be shortlisted because they tick all the boxes, just because there's Python and Spark. So therefore, that's how you end up with 88% of people who are not relevant for the job. That doesn't mean they're not good, and I say weak, not in the sense of like their skills. They might be expert in their respective skills, but they're going to end up in the wrong bucket just because of this uh, inferior way of selecting CV. So no tree, all those platforms, that's all they use. So people can play with that to try to be shortlisted, but usually it's not a very sustainable system. So we, because we hire a lot of people, a lot of, we realized that a lot of people, a lot of managers were wasting time interviewing the wrong people, recruitment was taking a lot of time. So we tried to see, can we use machine learning and NLP to simplify, not replace, because you know we cannot replace everything, but just to see like, is there a way where we can help them, support them? So we met with them to try to understand you know, what they actually look uh, into a CV. Like, is it just about skill or is there other things? And there were two main areas that they look at when someone applies for a role. There are the skills, of course. Does the candidate have the right skills? The, you know, do you need Python and Spark? You know, where did you go to school? Like, what kind of, what have you done before? Uh, hobbies, you know, and so on. Like, the classic CV. But there is also something that they try to feel. So I'm using feel on purpose because it's to differentiate from machine processes. Uh, is a person the right fit? You can be very good, but maybe in this case, WMB is not the right place for you. Maybe, you know, you are more like a single, you know, contributor. You would be better in a startup. A big company is not for you. That happens. It doesn't mean that it's bad, you know, but this person might be select shortlisted, but actually from the very beginning, you know, this is not the right fit. So there are lots of different aspects that are considered you know, going through all the CV by recruiters. You know, and I'm talking even like external recruiters and internal recruiters. So we try to see, you know, can we capture this kind of information? You know, not completely, but is there a way where we could get, get give our recruiters a head start uh, in stealing? I'm going to talk about our solution now. It's not going to be too technical. Uh, it's really good, more going to be about the processes that we follow and the techniques that we use, so there won't be any coding. Uh, and I'm going to start with the right skill. So for that, that was, that one was actually very difficult because the same person can be a good fit for different people, or for a different job, or the same skill may be relevant to different areas, and so it's actually very, uh, when you think about it, um, just looking at a piece of paper, it's actually very difficult to compare this person with someone we know is a good fit. So uh, we use an unsupervised approach and using someone who was already at WMB as a reference to try to compare this person with all the people who applied for the job and identify who is relevant, most uh, promising. So you get a lot of CVs from uh, recruiters and the, what, the, way the, the way the process works is that the manager would provide the CV, so the hiring manager, he says, I need a new data scientist. But in this case, they will also provide the CV of someone they know. Is ex they would like a clone of this person. Maybe. If you could find me another one like this person, it would be absolutely perfect. So there is like this superstar who provides the CVs, and then this will basically be compared with the list of CVs that we have provided. So there were there are lots of different ways of processing text uh, documents. Uh, because we have two aspects, we try to diversify the techniques you know, to make the process more robust. So then we do the same thing with the reference CV. And then by just using cosine similarity, we basically try to compare you know, who out of all the applicants is the closest match to our uh, superstar. So similarity is basically like you, are, you end up with a vector in n dimension, so you just basically compare how collinear they are. So that's a very standard metric. It's used in many different uh, areas. And that's what we use to generate a skill score. So from the CV and the person that you would like to find a clone of, who is the closest match, basically? And this without any tagging. So there is nothing like if Python, yes, if PySpark, yes, like nothing. It is purely based on the documents you provide. So is it enough? We know that it's not, because you know the CV does not represent you completely. So this has pros and cons, but in terms of logic, we thought that was acceptable at this stage. 
So then came the right field. So that one was actually very different because in this case, it's based on criteria, like based on the company. So Donnelly has some values, curiosity, and so on. Um, it has, uh, they are, I don't know, not discriminating. I'm just, I don't, I don't have any exact example, but just there are things, you know, that Dun and B, for example, will not appreciate based on, I don't know, you support some uh, group, blah, blah, blah. Um, so in this case, we decided to go with a supervised approach. So when before it was unsupervised using a reference CV, in this case, we tried to use a predictive approach. We had on both the CVs of the applicants and the people currently working and try to see if we could create a predictive model. So our target variable was, one was a good fit, which means um, they are the and and they are a good fit, we know that, or they applied and they were a good fit, or they applied and they were not a good fit, and uh, all the people who were rejected immediately. So we started with something, but in this case we used a much more like um, systematic approach. So we used TFIDF, this one, so again, same numbers, but it should be in the real life and so on. Uh, where each CV basically becomes a vector. And you, but this time it's focused a lot on the keyword of it. So this is how TFID, uh, TFIDF works. Um, is it, uh, why didn't we use word to vec Because we used it before and we wanted to try to consolidate the process, reinforce it using different techniques. Um, it was difficult to model that because there was a lot of noise. It was a very noisy data set. Um, so we ended up using ensembling. So we combined lots of small predictors to try to build a stronger predictor. So I don't know if you've done that. If you've done any Kaggle competition, if you want to go in the top 10%, you know, you have to use a resource to ensembling. So each one of those was very bad. I'm going to be honest. It was like barely better than flipping a coin. But when we combine XGBoost, extra trees, L1 and L2, we started to get something a bit stronger. So in the end, we, we used AUC because we want to rank the candidates. So this is a good metric for binary problem in this context. And we had an average across validation score of 65% and test 62. So it's not great. I would give you that, but it's better than nothing. It's better than chance. So that gives you at least an edge over a random process. So the, and usually like AUC is very good at, and those algorithms are very good at, selecting the very good one from the very bad one, you know the middle one is going to be not great. But because we only want to show this the top 5% of 20 candidates, we don't care about being accurate further down the, the ranking. What we want is more as much confidence as possible for the top most promising candidates. So then you get predictions of probabilities and we converted that just with the scaling. Uh, between 0 and 100, and that became our fit score. And then, uh, this is used in combination with the previous, uh, skills, uh, sorry, skill score. And we did just a double, we try like averaging, like different combinations, otherwise, like kind of giving the same thing. Uh, so we just took like the total and we try writing by that. So that was basically the process that we tried, we experimented with to see like, Okay, we have all those series of very promising candidates. Can we try to differentiate the ones who are actually a good fit for the job and the people who are not necessarily like not good, but not the right fits for the number and the job? So now after that was the validation. So that was very nice on paper. Like the treatment was like, oh, that sounds very good, but you, know, you need a tangible result. You need to prove that it works in the real world. So for that, we used um, the result of an actual recruitment drive that Dun did. Uh, so every once in a while, when they have lots of people to hire, like for the same kind of job, they invite lots of people in, on, in one day. So it's a lot. So it's a very exhausting for the, all the people taking the interview. It's a very time-consuming process. And we try to see, okay, if they had used our system, you know, how well would this have performed? So 100 people, around 100 candidates were invited for all those roles. And in the end, 23 offers were made. So what we've done is then we apply our process against all those CVs. And so that 13 of the 23 were in the top 25 of our recommendations. So our system recommended 25 people. 13 out of those 25 actually got, uh, well, they, they got an offer. So that means that uh, we missed some people, but uh, there was still quite a decent share of the people that were captured. 
Uh, six were flagged as good, uh, as good potential, but actually they were not a good fit at all. So if I go back to the performance of the previous slide, like the predictive model, with a low AUC, I think this is an example where the system falls short. It is not enough to go to understand everything. Uh, in this case, like people saying, yeah, you're good to go with this guy. Actually, it was definitely not the right fit. Um, but if Dunambi had only invited those 25 people, they would only have missed 10 candidates, or well, still quite a lot, but they would have interviewed four times less people. So long story short, it's, um, it is amazing. Not enough, definitely not. But is it like useless? No. So the question is, how do you use this as an indicator uh, to improve or facilitate the recruitment process? So we're not using this in the real world because it's a research stuff and there are lots of things regarding the data. But this is an example of like how the NMB wants to use new techniques, try to improve existing processes to uh, yeah, basically make better decisions that data driven. So we, there are NLP, all those machine learning, they are like, you know, there are lots of applications in many different areas, like uh, Google uses that to optimize the electricity consumption, like you have that everywhere for uh, optimizing resources management and so on. So we wanted to try it with management. Um, there's actually a startup, a French startup, which is quite good at that. They, they do it slightly differently, but uh, this is something that is developing, like tools for HR, data-driven. Um, <clears throat> the only issue is that, and it's not an issue, I think we wanted it to be this way actually, the, it's not going to give you an, an absolute score for you. And I don't think it should be like that, it should be always based versus someone you know is, you, you know, is good for the job. So if you, because two people can be very good for the job or not at all or cross, you know, there are too many variations. So trying to have an absolute system like you apply and it tells you like 80% chance is good, this is not going to work at all. So it has to always be compared to someone else. Uh, we are still doing some uh, doing some small benchmark, uh, especially to understand the weak points. You know what kind of code, you know what, why were some people flagged as very promising when actually they were not, or what happened why people who, who actually turned out to be very good were not flagged. So this is still in a comparison state, and we are not making any recruitment using this system. I just want to know the truth. Um, but that's something we would want to explore more and more. And the NMB is like, because it's a data science company, uh, I think they should be the first to try to optimize the internet processes using machine learning. And that's it. So uh, thank you.